The next round is called Believe It or Not. In this round, I'll give the panellists a simple statement and all they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Sean, David and Ruth, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. You can also do a laughing yoga, laughing exercise for the heart and mind. What you can do, just laugh. Very easy. Don't feel shy. <laughs> That was Guru Yogi Ramesh and his own unique brand of yoga. Here's your related statistic. The average woman laughs 100 times a day. The average man laughs only 50 times a day. What do you think? Is that true or false? I think the average woman is laughing maybe twice as much since the latest divorce settlement laws, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that could be quite Let's true. Let's hope so, because I'm going through a divorce. You're going hey? through a divorce? I am. Has he got lots of money? No. Are you laughing more since you got divorced oh, or less? Yeah. Uh, I'm laughing more. So you're happy? Twice Tony. as much. <laughs> Who's got the money? What's Him the... or you? Hang no, on. well, I'm going through one or two because I'm not really good enough. Are you having one as well? <laughs> Mine's nearly through. Which one's that with? <laughs> no, I'm just... I'm... Oh, no, you Mr. two just go. <laughs> Thanks for really catty loose women. <laughs> How well. Oh, Ruth. Can I tell you a real thing that they missed out on this uh, poll programme? It's a real poll. It was in the UK Jewish News, right? And I, I was voted, I was voted the sixth most sexy Jew in the world, right? <laughs> Number five was as Alan f***ing Sugar. I am! man who looks like a crumpled tea bag. <laughs> OK, Ruth, if you had to choose between Alan Sugar and David Baddiel, who would you go with? Alan Sugar. You're f***ing fired. <laughs> The average woman laughs 100 times a day. How do you measure a laugh? 100 times a day is a lot, isn't it? Could be one laugh. What is one laugh? Is that her? Is that a laugh? <laughs> <laughs> if I go, ha, 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 yeah. ha, 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 ha,
Yes, every year, 14,000 Brits injure themselves with vegetables compared to just 1,200 who injure themselves with chainsaws. The next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I'll give the panellists a simple statement. All they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Sean, Johnny and Peter, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. <laughs> was from the 1957 B-movie, The Brain from Planet Arus. Your related statistic is as follows. 72% of Americans believe that in a war with creatures from another planet, America would triumph. <laughs> True or false? Independence Day, America won. Yeah. War of the Worlds, America won. Yeah. Planet of the Apes, America didn't win. So I think... If those documentaries are anything to go by, then <laughs> two out of three sounds. I think sounds you know my problem with Independence Day. What? They won with a laptop, yeah? yeah. They managed to hack into the alien computer and bring down the spacecraft. I can't get my laptop to interface with the printer. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with finding a Scart League for the ball. <laughs> <laughs> my problem with War of the Worlds was. There was no way to stop these aliens, and then suddenly they all just get a cold and they die. It's That's the only way you beat them, though, isn't it? Like in the Triffids. It's, they don't use conventional weapons, it's seawater. And I think the way to obviously beat aliens isn't, isn't with, like, normal weapons, is when they come down, they lay on a lovely big buffet, right? It's all dodgy prawns. <laughs> <laughs> Mussels that haven't opened properly. <laughs> Put a bit of chilli in the tiramisu. <laughs> I think it's true. I think it's terrifying, but it's true. I think the thing... Yeah, you, sorry, thing Peter, about can that... I just clarify? Aliens are not coming, they're not on their way. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a story. It's like right. it's like a what if. Oh, I see. It seems like one of them, another one of them factoids that points to how dumb Americans are, which I don't have no problem with. Seventy-two percent of Americans believe that they win in a war against an alien race. What it doesn't say is that seventy-two percent of British people believe that a draw would be good enough. <laughs> Sure, what do you think, true or false? So what you're saying is, is, are Americans thick? Yes, they are. Thick as pig shit. Reg? Um, I hate being put in a position to defend America. Um, so, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so you're saying that it's true, are you, Sean? Sure? Yeah, I think it's true. Well, I can tell you that, in fact, it is false. Oh. Only 16% of Americans think they would win in a war with creatures from another planet. OK, Dave, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. That new Superman film looks amazing, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that was the star love dancers there. Here is your related statistic. 55% um, of women say they've asked a man to dance to try and work out if he'd be good in bed. True or false? I think it's false. <laughs> Two words, Michael Flatley. He can dance, he'd be shit in bed, wouldn't he? Why? He never uses his arms, does he? So there'd be no foreplay, then he'd kick the shit out of you, wouldn't he? <laughs> Do you think it's true? Have you ever pulled anyone who's a good dancer? No. But I do think, actually, I do think if they're a good dancer, they can move their hips. Yeah, I reckon it. <laughs> oh, Jimmy, that's so horribly why frightening. You, why do you pull your first, though? <laughs> you dance more like you're, you've been hung on some railings. Right? <laughs> yeah, I do, ladies. <laughs> it's Virgil from Thunderbirds at a party, relaxing after they've saved the world. <laughs> I sit down and I'm brilliant. And the second I get up, 
People think you're allergic to music, don't they? <laughs> you're so bad. He's got a music allergy. <laughs> Turn it off! <laughs> what are you going to go for? Um, I think it's true. true I think, I it, well, men can't dance, generally speaking, and women are shit judges of men anyway, so... Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you that the answer is true. Ooh. Yes, 55% of women have asked a man to dance to try and work out if he's good in bed. To be fair, dancing is a good indicator. I tend to dance for about 10 seconds, and then I have a bit of a cry. <laughs> The next round is, believe it or not, I'll give the panellists a simple statement. All they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Dave, Sally and Dave, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. I like being older because I can do what I want whenever I want. Movies are cheaper. My husband is all mine. No more competition from the job. I find in retrospect that I spent a lot of time doing meaningless things for people I didn't really like, for organizations I didn't really believe in. I can't get pregnant anymore. <laughs> Some very old people there. Here is your related <laughs> statistic. 31% of over 65s believe that their age gives them the right to behave badly. Is that true or false? That sounds awful, but I think it's true. I think the girl... Oh, sod it. I'm old. I'm going to moan. 31% of over 65s think they're living in 1944 anyway, don't they? They don't know, are they? And they drive that way as well. That's behaving badly. <laughs> Last time they passed the test was in a Saracen Armoured car at El Alamein. <laughs> Driving in the road, stickers in the back window, I lost a leg at Dunkirk and all that. <laughs> <laughs> and they do, they drive as if they're permanently looking for a parking space. Absolutely. I've got where this woman... <laughs> she was 96 and she did wing walking. You know where they go on a plane, in a stunt plane? When she landed, she had the face of a 16-year-old. <laughs> All the wrinkles had been blown back, <laughs> down her back, and congregated in her knickers. <laughs> I remember driving back from Blackpool once, right? You've lived a life. <laughs> Rock on! And there was an old woman driving the opposite way up the hard shoulder. <laughs> and I stopped and I said, are you all right, love? Is this the way to Blackpool? <laughs> No, you've got to all go that way, and then the other side, they all go that way. And she was just, just carried on, Mr. Well, there's that old story or urban myth about an old woman falling her husband up who's coming back on the M65 and saying, be careful, I've just had a report on the, on the radio <laughs> okay. that there's a mad bastard driving the wrong way up the M65. He said, one well, mad bastard, there's hundreds <laughs> Oh, it's oh, funny up north, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> they always go shopping on a Saturday dinner time. They've got all fucking week <laughs> to go shopping, <laughs> haven't they? <laughs> all week. And you're in a hurry on a Saturday dinner time. They're in the queue with the coupons. And do you take bird's eye? And do you take... <laughs> How much is it? One seventy-five. Give me a two quid. <laughs> Fuck off. Go on. Thank you, Dave. I can't understand why you keep using the word they. <laughs> Show. Okay, 31% of the over 65s believe their age gives them the right to behave badly. Yeah, true or false? What do you think? I think they think it's true. We all seem to agree on this. You think it's true? Mm. Well, I can tell you that the answer is false. Oh, no. Only 3% of pensioners think that their age gives them the right to behave badly. Yes. And the three in question are Foggy, Compo and Clegg. <laughs> okay, Sean, Julian and Edith, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate <clears throat> your statistic. Yeah, there's Dick Shepherd just about to attempt to go through our special seaside special van. I think it's well and truly on fire now. Here he comes up to the approach. Here he goes, keep your fingers crossed. And he's through! <laughs> well, he's working right the way through. The, it is still on fire. And let's see if he's going to get out all right. We're just all keeping our fingers crossed at this stage. The fire seems to be... No, the fire's still there underneath the bonnet. They're just at this very moment trying to get him out. Yes, there he goes. They're, trying, they're tipping it up. Still very much on fire, I'm afraid. And they're just trying to pull him out right now. Yes, Dick is, I think, all right in there. Yes, he's definitely all right. I can see Dick moving inside there, so everything seems to be all right. Yes, here he comes. He's all right, ladies and gentlemen. There he is, Dick Shepard. He's made it. A nice round of applause. Well done, Dick. Dick Shepherd. <laughs> you know, people talk about how, like, uh, telly wasn't like it used to be. You know? <laughs> that was a Saturday night. That was a show called Saturday Special. So the highlight of the show was him driving 
into a removal van on fire. <laughs> that was it. That was the finale of the night. You drive into it and then you crawl out. Ta da! <laughs> okay, your related statistic. 21% of men admit to having done something that put their life in danger in order to impress a woman. <laughs> True or false? I think it's false, cos I think it's higher. Cos I think men think that switching off the PlayStation is putting their life in danger. <laughs> <laughs> Julian, has a man ever done anything to impress you? Um, he did come round to my house driving a Fiat. <laughs> <laughs> that did the trick. Have you? What, have I ever done anything to impress a woman? Watch loose women. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think the best way to impress women is take it to a car boot sale. Get anything you want. <laughs> Money to no object. You silver tongue you. That, that glove, have it. <laughs> There's a dashboard from a Vauxhall Viva there. Take it away, it's yours. 21% of men admit having done something to put their life in danger in order to impress a woman. True or false? It's true. It's true. Well, I can tell you that the answer is true. 21% of men have done something to put their life in danger to impress a woman. Once, driving a girl home, I turned into traffic without checking the blind spot properly. Man, she was turned on. <laughs> the next round is Believe It or Not. I'll give the panellists a simple statement. All they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Dave, David and Louis, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. The Daily Mirror calls on you. Who? Us? Yes, and millions of other young people like you. Hey, you two, cut it out. You're the Daily Mirror, aren't you? Can't you stop them? Stop you more like it. What? <laughs> well, why spoil their fun? I never carried on like that. And look at the mess you made of things. Oh, don't worry about him. The Daily Mirror believes in young people, and that means you. Well, that was an advert for the Daily Mirror from 1983. <laughs> Here is your related statistic. 75% of young people say their biggest worry in life is spotty skin. Is that true or false? Louis, what do you think young people worry about? Did you have spots when you were young? Very few, yeah. But I got clearer still. I sorted them all out. They didn't have clearer still when you were young. They did. <laughs> <laughs> they did. Are there any pop stars with spotty skin? Mick Hucknell. Mick Hucknell spotty? It's not good looking. <laughs> No one knows if he's spotty because no one's been able to look for long enough. <laughs> Vic's not taking a great part in this round. But... I found it on the floor. There was a bit of loose. <laughs> you know, this stuff on the floor. So I thought, you know, why miss out on an opportunity like that? It's a golden opportunity. <laughs> True or false? If you're at that, at that age where you're getting spotty skin, that's adolescence, puberty, and there's all the things that go with that. Like chatting up girls, and you think they'll be amused if you do that thing on the back of the knee that makes the leg collapse. <laughs> I did to Christine Argues in the dinner queue once, she had a tray, <laughs> and I did both knees. <laughs> <laughs> what were you worried about when you were young? Because you were told me you were very confused when you were young. <laughs> Can you resolve those issues? <laughs> Just stop You'd it. I'd love it if I kissed you. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. You would love it. You just need to try it. I don't know whether this is the forum. It is. <laughs> I am ready. <laughs> Let me just give you a little kiss. No. You kissed Louis earlier. <laughs> well, you kissed my knee earlier as well, so... I want to work up your body. <laughs> Right, 75% of young people say their biggest worry in life is spotty skin. What do you think? I'd say it's true. You think it's true? OK, well, I can tell you that the answer is true. <laughs> Sean, Vic and Christian, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. For Tony, it's audition time on Star Quality. <laughs> Seconds. <laughs> that was Tony Rudd.
<laughs> I know what you're thinking. No, that was Michael Jackson. No, it was Tony Rudd. <laughs> but that guy's not even a Jackson looky like, sound alike, look alike. He's just a not in anything at all alike. -y. He's like a vaguey, bitty, tiny bitty like. -y. <laughs> okay, your related statistic is as follows 36% of obsessive fans would be willing to swap a family member for their hero. <laughs> Is that true or false? <laughs> Swap a member of my family for an obsessive fan, though, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I quite have like you got any obsessive fans. fans. I bet you have a few. Uh, no, well, I've had one uh, who, who, was, who wrote to me every week for 18 months Man and begged me to, to marry her um, and said she was being um, sent off to Bangladesh to be married off by her dad and I was her only chance. And she said, I'll meet you outside Luton Station at 3 o'clock on Friday. And I never turned up, felt a bit guilty. Oh, and the letter cruel. stopped. The letter stopped, and I thought, oh, poor girl, she's been sent off. And after my first day on Channel 4 News, I got a letter from her. It was a year later, saying, I wasn't really sent off to be married. I was just saying that to make you jealous. <laughs> <laughs> and you married right. her? I married her, no. Um... <laughs> Trouble with Luton Station, there's two exits, isn't there? It's very easy. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your hero? My hero is Madonna. If you had to, David, who would you swap for Madonna? My dad. <laughs> Is it all right if I banana? have this now? <laughs> Where did you get that from? Was I that... got it from the room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry. I didn't have time to properly eat. I'm having a banana. Get on with the show. <laughs> I'm going to finish it. You might as well get on with the show. <laughs> So 36% of obsessive fans would be willing to swap a family member for their hero. Do you think it's true or false? We think it's true. Well, I can tell you that the answer is false. Oh. In fact, 72% of obsessive fans <laughs> would be willing to swap a family member for their hero. <laughs> Fair enough. If I could broker a deal to swap my auntie Gladys for David Beckham, I would. I'm not a massive fan of Beckhams or anything. I'd just like to see our midfield improved. <laughs> The next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I'll give the panellists a simple statement and all they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Dave, Fiona and Jason are to go first. Oh. To illustrate their statistic, let's have a look at a clip of an animal psychic channelling the spirit of a dolphin. It is our great delight and pleasure to be able to share this time and this space with you. You, dear friends, within human form, we within dolphin form. <laughs> OK, here is your related <laughs> statistic. 52% of Brits would like to be reincarnated as a dolphin rather than any other animal. True or false? I don't know why anybody would want to come back as an animal. I just, you know, we're, we're human. Uh, you know, we're the best animal in the world. As a human, I only want to come back as a human, cos I'm number one, or a unicorn. I'm not sure you get that. <laughs> <laughs> no, cos people love horses, don't they? They love horses. Imagine how much they'd love a flying horse. Imagine that. <laughs> and if they didn't love you, fly off. <laughs> it's a very good point, Jason. What, what would you guys want to come back as? I could probably come back as a daddy long legs, live for six hours, and some f pulls your wings off. <laughs> Or oh, I'd come back as a dolphin in a, in, in a fish pool in Blackpool. Yeah. Somebody going, right, you, jumper, you won't get a f***ing pilchard. <laughs> dolphins have got the edge for me, I think. They are very sexually active dolphins. They have group sex. They do all that. Didn't they? And the actual, the, the penis is prehensile. They can pick stuff up and carry it. That's brilliant, that. That's <laughs> like a bit of flower arranging. Look at that. <laughs> Jermaine, what would you come back as? Uh, I will come back as a host of recycled nutrients, fungus and bacteria, and that suits me fine. <laughs> you know, it's a comedy show, do you mean? 52% of Brits would like to be reincarnated as a dolphin rather than any other animal. True or false? Well, we're having false. a round now. False. false. So yeah. you're going for false? 2-1. False. OK. Well, I can tell you that the answer is false. Ah! Yes, it's actually 13% that would like to come back as a dolphin. Of course, lots of people don't believe in reincarnation, but I think you may as well. You only live once. <laughs> right, OK. Sean, Phil and Jermaine, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. 
720. dollars All our bids are locked in. Good luck to you all. Our prize, 799 Merry ring. <laughs> Jermaine, when she found out she was coming on this show. <laughs> that was the Australian Price is Right. Here is your related statistic. 67% of game show contestants describe appearing on television as the most exciting thing that has ever happened to them. True or false? She looked horrified. She like she'd been given, uh, you know, tickets for a dinner with Mick Hucknall or something. <laughs> 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 it's called hysterics, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. They should have given slugged her. Bam. Yeah. What, what, what kind of a feminist are you? <laughs> I would slug you if you had hysterics. Will you? Do I have to have hysterics? <laughs> <laughs> How about if I'm just cheeky? <laughs> Female eunuch, this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't want to be here. <laughs> about game shows, they always say to contestants, don't they? Don't they? they always say to some, uh, fun, you know, there's a funny thing happened to you once, didn't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With biscuits or something. <laughs> yeah. And there you go, oh, yes, yeah, I bought, uh, bought some uh, rich tea and uh, I got them home and it turned out, I forgot you've got it wrong, actually, but we, we like digestives. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the usual stories they tell. So you can see that, that actually the anecdotes they have in their life are so pitiful that television probably would blow their minds. <laughs> Jermaine, you were on one, though, weren't you? You yeah. were on Big Brother. You, was it the most exciting thing that's ever happened to you? No. What was? Almost anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I loathed it. And they make up rules that you consider yourself bound by, and then they change them. And they make it as hard as they can. This was Big Brother, wasn't it? Not your days in Guantanamo. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think, Sean? Um, I think it's uh, absolutely spot on, Jimmy. That <laughs> statistic isn't a statistic, it's a fact. <laughs> well, I'm I can staring you... down the barrel of the truth there. <laughs> and I'm saying yes. <laughs> I can tell you that the answer is false. <laughs> Every week, 4,000 Britons are hospitalised through DIY accidents. Is that true or false? I've never met anyone who's been involved in a DIY accident or even heard a story about someone who's been involved in a DIY accident. Yeah, but then you move in the right circles to hear the <laughs> DIY stories. <laughs> I've, I've built stuff. Yeah? What have you built? Nothing. <laughs> God, that's the woman who marries you. Why? Because you don't... What do you do, then? I'm an what? attractive prospect, Tricia. <laughs> Are you good around the house, Emma? No, my light bulb burns out. I sell the house and move. <laughs> I bet Dave does DIY. You look kind of a no, DIY. No, I don't, and I think oh. that's probably, it's, you know, people do get hospitalised because we just, sh men are generally shit at DIY. The ones who are good at DIY do it for a living, basically. Why are men on this planet if you All cannot right, put Trisha, out the rubbish okay. into DIY? Okay. Why are you here? Bridges, roads, <laughs> hospitals, everything you can think of that's <laughs> ever been invented. <laughs> Western civilization, in yes. short. But, Sean, if we don't give you a little bit of how's your father, never mind about building... How's your father? <laughs> How is it way back there in the 50s? <laughs> I tried to be polite on the television. All right, Have you seen we... your show? <laughs> <laughs> never mind building civilizations. You can't last two days without a bit of Listen, sex. Listen, you shelf whore. <laughs> You're putting out... Is your house just covered in shelves? <laughs> Your husband's going, it's pretty. Every time I put one out, no. she puts up. He can, <laughs> he, can, he, he can do a bit of deal. deal can he? Yeah. I bet his shed's fantastic. His shed is great. He's got an amazing shed in the garden. <laughs> yeah. With a combination lock on there, a drawbridge, everything. <laughs> I mean, the shed, he's got a gun turret. <laughs> oh! I'm in the shed! <laughs> yeah, just stuff! <laughs> 
Okay, so every week, 4,000 Brits are hospitalised through DIY accidents. Is that true or false? I think it's an absolute scandal, that statement. It's foul calumny. <laughs> it's absolute nonsense. Poppycock. Absolute balderdash. What are you saying? Just give me an answer. No. You're saying no? You're saying it's false? Yeah. Yeah, I'm saying it's false. I can tell you that the answer is, in fact, true. Yeah. No. 4,000 Brits are hospitalised each week through DIY accidents. I once had a serious DIY accident. The phone rang while I was using a nail gun. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Dave, Tricia and Justin, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. care of this. Look, buddy, I don't know who you are, but I'm gonna kick your ass! What are you doing with my wife? What? Not your wife, mister! Shut up, Anna. Well, that's it, man. <laughs> <laughs> the best episode of Lovejoy ever. <laughs> Here is your related statistic. 64% of men believe they have a higher pain <laughs> threshold than women. Is that true or false? You don't get colds, do you? You get the flu. Yeah, but that's not pain, is it? Pain's like getting your d*** caught in your flies. <laughs> that's real pain. No, the real pain is giving birth. It's like, as Diana well, Ross once told me, it's like in a fridge. <laughs> I read in Cosmic Pulse, I've seen some doctor's surgery, it said the, the thing, the most painful thing that a woman can have done is have the nipples clamped. And I thought, well, no, I'm... having them torn away has got to be worse. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, actually, having said all that, women do have a higher pain threshold, because they go through all sorts of yeah. stuff just to, just to feel and look good. It is all painful stuff you put yourself through, just to attract, well, just to look good and feel good, and for us... It, you were going to really... say attract men, well, weren't you? in you a way, say... yeah, in a way. But, I mean, there's a bloke in Lee this week got arrested for shagging a frozen turkey, so, you know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> So we're wasting our time, is well, what you're you know. saying? Trisha, you're in a really bad mood tonight, aren't you? Well, just <laughs> question yeah. everything. Cos I'm the only girl here... No, I'm not. Alex is the other girl. <laughs> Do you have a pop at our little Alex? No, Alex is more of a girl than I am. He's, he's all sweet. Why would you say I was a girl? But you're sort of all, you know... Oh, I don't... I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> is that your impression of me? You're sort of... <laughs> Are you sitting there doing an impression of me? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sitting there doing a... No, you're all sort of delicate. I can be fairly rugged. <laughs> go on, then. Go ahead. Oh, go, go on. Ahead. Let's yeah? have some ruggedness. Yeah, yeah. let's right, yeah. rugged. So, anyway, I was watching the football. Yeah, yeah. yeah? Yeah. I don't know I can pull it off. <laughs> really? Yeah, just push me. Just, just push. Hang on. Uh, yeah! <laughs> My hero. Shut up, Trisha! Yeah. The next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I give the panellists a simple statement. All they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Dave, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. There are many modern cults, but only transcendental meditation will teach you to fly. It's literally doing this and getting up and doing it. An athlete would obviously be able to get further. The more the lighter you are to the relationship of the power in your legs, the further you will get. <laughs> Yogic flying, then. Here is your related statistic. 36% of Brits think that New Age therapies are utter nonsense. Do you think that's true or false? I was very sceptical, and then I wasn't feeling well, and they said, try uh, one of those organic coffee enemas. And it worked like a million bucks. They threw me out of Starbucks. I can never go back. <laughs> <laughs> but I, went, I went to Hong Kong and, uh, when I was really ill, and I went to a traditional herbalist uh, Chinese shop. And I went in and trying to communicate, I did that stupid thing that we do, and I went, me sore, ah, sore, shiver, shiver. I don't know why, shiver. <laughs> you have anything for me? He went, ah, night nurse. <laughs> no. <laughs> See, I recently got attuned in Reiki. Oh, yeah. that's channeling 
It's kind of like a healing energy that you, put, you are the channel for. And it's really weird because I think it really works. Sorry, do you want to buy some magic beans? <laughs> <laughs> you can do Reiki as well, can't you? I used to be a hippie, I've sort of... I've moved on. <laughs> What's that? What's that? But Jimmy does Reiki? Yeah. You make her. <laughs> Quite right. What did she look like that was doing the Reiki? What did she look like? Yeah, it was like this gorgeous girl <laughs> doing <laughs> Reiki over you. Or was that? <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's a, a big difference with a man. If we were both Reiki instructors, who would make you guys feel better? Come on, oh, shut no. your eyes. Come on, Holly. Shut your eyes so you won't know who does which first. Now, one of us is going on one side, one of us is going to get on the other side. Right, you're going to what? Heal me? Side felt better. I think the, the, the left hand side felt like it would be slightly more expensive. <laughs> and the right hand side felt like if you're on a budget in a hurry, why not? <laughs> which side was which? I was the budget in a hurry. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it had gone further, but you were probably thinking of the calories, weren't you? <laughs> Thirty-six percent of Brits think new age therapies are utter nonsense. True or false? Thirty-six percent. I'd say that's true. I can tell you the answer is true. Yes, yes thirty-six percent of Brits think new age therapies are utter nonsense. It's sad that they're so cynical, but it's probably just because their chakras are closed. <laughs> Sean, Vic, and Eamon, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. You may have met a few people who like doing this sort. Of but pretty hard. <laughs> you have certainly seen thousands <laughs> like this. They're not a nuisance. They're <laughs> a real danger. <laughs> Stop it! Come here. What do you think you're up to? You've probably infected thousands of people already. What do you think this is for? <laughs> Close your eyes. <laughs> now, hang it. Sneeze. Handkerchief, sneeze. See what I mean? That's the idea. Well, that was a public information film about sneezing etiquette. Here is your related statistic. 71% of people say that British manners are worse than they've ever been. True or false? Piss off. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what really upsets me is minicab drivers. You find out from minicabs, come to your house, and they hoot the horn outside yeah. the house. They don't come and knock. Yeah. They hoot your horn. Yeah. And suddenly I just feel like I'm his girlfriend or something. <laughs> <laughs> but I imagine he's sitting there in his car like. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, don't hoot, come and get me. <laughs> People who knock on the door once. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think, oh, I don't know that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I can't. Who does that? Many cab drivers, Do they? if they're not just outside honking the horn, they come in and go... <laughs> and you go, what is that? There's a pan falling off the... Off the <laughs> <sound machine. laughs> Joan, do you think we've got better manners than the Americans? Oh, I think so. Once in the last 21 years, a man opened a car door for me. Once. And we were on the motorway at the time. How <laughs> 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 with you, bitch? 71% of people say that British manners are worse than they've ever been. Do you think that's true or false? Is it true? I can tell you that the answer is true. Ooh. Yes, 71% of Brits think that manners have never been worse. The other day I stood up for a pregnant woman on the bus. Well, I wasn't going to fight her sitting down. <laughs> Our next round is face-off. We've got six well-known Big Brother contestants here in the studio. Nadia, Jade, Shabazz, Eugene, Jane and Mikey. <laughs> OK. We asked the public which of these housemates would make the best James Bond. Nadia, master of disguise. <laughs> you know, I have to say, my dream come true would be to be a, a buddy in the you know, James Bond movie, so I can take it. I would love to be. Octopussy. <laughs> Octococky. <laughs> what, about, what about Jade in Doctor No Idea? Yeah. <laughs> 
ginger gadget, man, isn't he? Yeah. Now, Eugene's Q, yeah. he's not Bond. Oh, yeah, yeah, he'd be like, <laughs> see <laughs> this? It looks like a machine gun, but actually, it's a radio. <laughs> <laughs> this is an atomic watch, but when you turn it off, it tells the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's your favourite Bond gadget, Eugene? I seem to remember there was the watch, as you said, the watch, which had all the gadgets in it, and it had the bomb in it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to go for, Dave? I still Jane. Well, there's only one who looks a bit like a James Bond, isn't there? Mikey looks like James Bond, doesn't he? Yeah. You You're going you. with Mikey. OK, yeah. who would you go with? Uh, we'd go for Eugene, I think, Jimmy. I think he would make a less than adequate Bond, <laughs> <laughs> which is the best that we can hope for. <laughs> would you kill for your country? Yeah. I would. The only problem is I'd probably be late. <laughs> why, why would you be late? <laughs> My timekeeping's appalling. You've got an atomic watch, man! <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you that you're right. The housemate people thought would make the best Bond is Eugene. Oh, hey. Woo! <laughs> we asked the public, which of these housemates would you most like to go on holiday with? Who do you think, out of that motley crew, got the most votes? Yeah. Sure. Surely there should be a like, prefix to that, like, if you had to. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd like to see how Shabazz reacts to turbulence in flight. <laughs> <laughs> Jade, where's your favourite holiday destination? Dubai. Where? Dubai. Where's that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice, though, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I just go to new places. I'm, at the end of the day, I don't want to be a geography teacher, so I don't have to know. Quite right. <laughs> it's such a great shame you don't want to be a geography teacher, though, because <laughs> yeah. children are missing out on yeah. what would be a hilarious education. <laughs> Eugene, have you ever been to Vegas? Vegas? Las Vegas. Yeah, no. OK. <laughs> have you seen the film Rain Man? Yes. OK. I think we could make a lot of money. <laughs> OK. Which housemate would you most likely go on holiday with? Jade and, and Jane as well. So you, yeah, Jade and Jane, yeah. on holiday together. Oh, yeah. That is a Channel 5 programme, and you know it. <laughs> what would we call it, though? Uh, mm. Armageddon? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to force you to guess now. Jade. You're going to go for Jade, are you? Yeah. Dave's team? Well, if it was Safari, Shabazz, that'd be a laugh. <laughs> but look at the lion! Look at the lion! <laughs> I'm going to hide its food! Yeah, you do that. <laughs> <laughs> he is its food. <laughs> 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 You'd like to go on holiday with Nadia? Yeah, I could borrow her shoes. Ah! Oh. Her shoes. <laughs> You'd like to go on holiday with Nadia? No, Simply I because said she's sitting I'm, next to no, my kids. I've been on holiday with my kids, so I went Have on the weekend, so yeah. Who for? Hello or OK? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, who for? No one, for myself. And What's who? the point of that? <laughs> <laughs> you had a photographer with you? No. What's the point of that? <laughs> <laughs> on, what's your final guess? Shabazz. You're going to go for Shabazz. Yeah. Well, I can tell you that Shabazz, 8% of the public wanted to go on holiday with Shabazz. <laughs> or, more accurately, filled out the form incorrectly. <laughs> <laughs> the top answer was Jade, so you get the points. 35% of the population want to go on holiday with Jade. Jade recently said, I'm sick of the paparazzi, so she's having a deep pan ham and pineapple instead. <laughs> And the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion polls and it's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. Top thing men look for in a pub. I think the top thing I look for in a pub is a door. <laughs> <laughs> I always want to first hear, how do I get in? <laughs> <laughs> and then I would like a fine selection of organic wines and world music on the jukebox. <laughs> Stop it, you. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth, what do you look for in a pub? Um, normally the bar. <laughs> it is drink related. Oh, oh so, uh, good selection of drink. lagers, beers. Oh, doubles, doubles offer. Oh, two doubles, hour, Dub two doubles hour. for Happy hour is the right answer. Rick is going again. Yes! Yeah. Come on! Yeah. Some price in a beer, yeah. that's the same. Yes, the top thing men look for in a pub is happy hour. Most unlucky thing that can happen to you. <laughs> is it leaving war-torn Basra, having sex with a minging immigration officer, then being re-owned in Nottingham? <laughs> Uh, that is significantly worse than what I've got down here, but this is... You've got to remember this is a survey by direct line. The um, luckiest thing I've ever heard it happen to anybody... Do you ever hear this story about... This is true, sorry. Fabio, the, the male model... You ever heard of Fabio? He's had, he was his male model, lived in Hollywood, and he had loads of, like... He was on loads of posters in the 80s, thick hair. He was on... This is a true story. He was on a roller coaster... Yes. ..in a Disney World, and he was hit in the face with a goose. 
<laughs> a goose is going on this roller coaster, he's one of the best looking men in the world, and a goose hit him in the face <laughs> and ruined his career, smashed all his face to smithereens. Yeah, that was unlucky, unlucky for him. What about the goose? The goose got in the papers. Most geese don't get in the papers. <laughs> <laughs> on a similar note, very uh, completely true story, Aristotle, the great thinker, yeah. he, he died, Aristotle, when a hawk or an eagle was carrying a tortoise that he had you know, take from the ground for food. It dropped the tortoise, it fell 10,000 feet and hit Aristotle on the head. Which means that one of the most cleverest men in the world, in that flash of insight just before he died, yeah. thought, I've just been hit on the head by a f tortoise. <laughs> That's his last thought, a great man. Yeah. yeah. But we thought, tortoises are heavy. <laughs> Let's write that down. Oh. <laughs> It's to do with kind of homes and, you know, something that might happen in your home. Is it your house being flooded? Oh, plumber, plumber It's problems. to do with flooding, but something else as well? You've just decorated, you've just painted, you've just put a That's carpet, the right though. answer. Yeah. Yes. 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 yes, according to this survey from Direct Line, the most unlucky thing that can happen to you is your house flooding after you've decorated it. Unless you've decorated it in the style of a fantasy mermaid kingdom. <laughs> in which case, it's the icing on the cake. <laughs> Well, that noise tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the game, which means the final scores are Sean, David and Ruth have six points, but Dave, Ulrika and Alan have nine points. They're the winners. Yay!